So she's come a long way since her days presenting legendary gospel music show, People Get Ready. She retrained as a teacher and rose to the position of senior deputy head. So I've got to be on my best behavior. So however, during the, the, the past five years, she underwent a triple heart, uh, triple heart bypass surgery after having a heart attack. And in 2019, she was declared cancer free after being treated for bowel cancer hallelujah so many reasons to celebrate including juliet seeing her 55th birthday you wouldn't believe it looking at her but in spite of her sickness god gave her the strength to set up black jack media it's a company that specializes in publishing books written by black children and it's the only company currently doing so so i am pleased to say honored i feel like standing up Juliet, uh, it's a pleasure. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm absolutely fine. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. And, you know, going way, way back, we won't, you know, probably have to reveal my age as well. But probably the last time I've kind of been in, in this close proximity to you was probably 27 years ago when people get ready as a very young, uh, very young 18 year old sitting in the, the in the audience in my neighbor so i was i was there in my in my in my navy blue prince of wales jacket with gold buttons with a red tie on looking very looking know. like a very young pentecostal young man <laughs> <laughs> come a long way <laughs> I, i'll tell you but you know i like to be intentional about every day and and not only am I grateful for what I have, but can I just uh, take a second to be grateful for you, for your life, and also for yeah. your contributions to UK society? Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you very much. I'm no, honoured. Absolutely. Now, now, your work as a publisher has given you an opportunity to to share positive stories written by mm -hmm. black children uh, with the wider world. Now, where did your love for publishing start? Oh, gosh. Um, when I was younger, um, prior to People Get Ready, um, I worked on a Christian magazine called Exodus. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. See, so mm -hmm. that's going way back in the 80s. Wow. And then following Exodus, I got a job. Actually, I, I got a job as an office junior and I rose to um, head of promotions and marketing oh. at Britain's best black newspaper, The Voice newspaper. And I spent seven years there. Don't and it was seven fantastic years. So that gave me a love of both publishing and also um, working within the black community. Because so it was a, a two in one bone, basically. So yeah, that's where it started. Brilliant. Uh, I mean, and, and having set up your own publishing company, how much of a challenge have you found it? I mean, I say challenge, but yet also how rewarding have you found it? It's, it's, it's a challenge because, um, there aren't many um, black books out there for black children. I mean, I think they did a survey in 2017, um, the Centre of Primary Literary Studies, and they found that only 1% only of um, characters, main characters in children's books were Bane. Not even black, but Bane, and that was 1%. They did the survey again in 2019, and that improved to 4%, but that's pretty poor, basically. And I remember when I was younger, I wanted to write stories. Uh, I was very creative in terms of my writing. And, you know, every time I sent off a story, you know, someone said no here, no there. And I came into publishing by accident. I actually, you mentioned about having the heart attack and I had a heart attack in 2013 and I had quadruple bypass surgery in 2015. And um, I'm a mother of three and my youngest son, Romeo, he didn't want to come home. He was scared that if he came home, I would die. Wow. So he insisted on staying at my mum's house, his nan. And um, I spoke to the GP about it and um, we agreed that he could have something called play therapy, where he'd talk through his feelings, you know, through play. And at the end of the play therapy sessions, he'd come home um, and do some writing. And my daughter saw the writing, his thoughts and his feelings and thought, this is fantastic. We should put this in a book. And anything to help him, you know, I want to do, but I want to do it properly. I want to make sure that I could sell the book on the internet. I wanted it to be able to be in bookstores. So I had to join up with 
the publishing um, giants. I had to buy a barcode. All I went through all that process to make sure that his book was official. And um, he won the award for it. It was called Life Without My Mummy. And it was the first um, book that we published under Blackjack. And, um, but it was just a thing, as a, it was just a family thing. It wasn't anything more than that. Um, five years later, well, six years later, we've got um, 13 books now under Blackjack Media. And Romeo has written seven of them. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and we've, been, we've worked with, um, I think, 35 authors because yeah. 27 authors were in one special book that we did over COVID-19, over lockdown. Uh, yeah, we'll come to that in a minute. So I was, gonna, I was simply going to ask a question from the, from the start of the very first book. So 13, sorry, 13 books so far. That's just incredible. I, I've got some of the top here. We've got five coming out before Christmas. <laughs> so we're, we're on a roll. We're on a roll at the moment. We're on a roll. Brilliant. So I'm looking at Hey Black Girl, Hey Black Boy, Cancer and Me, Our Roots, um, Cook With Me and Nanny Hazel. Uh, my favourite parable. Yeah, Jacob's, yeah, Jacob's Jamaica. My favourite parables is actually a colouring book. Okay. So two little boys from my church, <laughs> two 12-year-old twins, um, they picked their favourite parables and summarised them and we made it into a colouring book. So oh. that's um, an active book. And Cook With Me and Nanny Hazel is Paige. Paige is 13. She wanted to write a book about her favourite meals that her nan cooks to oh. show us how to cook them. And I actually did the oxtail, because oxtail's in there and saltfish fritters. And I thought, I, I, don't tell nobody I haven't cooked oxtail before. I just gave it to my mum. I actually what, went through her book, step by step, and the oxtail was, <laughs> it was to die for. So it works, it works, it works. So yeah. Oh. So it's, it's just, it's, it's, it, a lot of it is legacy. And a lot of it is giving the children an opportunity to tell their stories. And giving the opportunity for the children to be authors. So what I found is that the feeling that these children, while we're working through the process, and I'm, a, I'm an English teacher by trade, I, I'm a, I was a senior leader, senior deputy head of a school, but my subject was English. And um, so working with them on the process of doing a book felt like school. So the children couldn't really vision or, or you know, have the vision of what it would look like and what it would be, but they go through the process. And as soon as that book is done and it's handed over to that child, you see a different child. You see somebody who, who feels really important, their confidence is up, their self-esteem is up, and their parents are saying, oh my God, it's a different child they've got. Because um, as a teacher, a senior leader, I also had a subject called citizenship that I used to um, run in my school. And my school is a inner city um, secondary school, you know, heart of Tottenham, the heart of where the 2011 riots were. And the kids, you know, walk into school, they sometimes mug for their phones. There was a little boy who was stripped off. His phone was taken off. He had to come into school in his underwear. You know, it's rough, Didn't basically. Me. But the opportunities we give the children, you know, in terms of um, um, activities that we run, so as with, with citizenship, I'd run quite a few major campaigns that they all got involved in, they all organized. We actually won a Queen's Award, which is like an MBE for, us, for an organization, for our um, start, stand against gun and knife crime. And all the kids are involved, we're doing posters, we're doing marches, we're doing conferences. So I, from the get-go, believe that if you get involved in doing something, giving someone responsibility, you know, you're going to get a great outcome afterwards. And that's where the book come in as well. They've got the responsibility of writing this, this down and, and doing the research and, and doing all the hard work, basically. And the reward is having that book at the end. And I said before, the response or what it does to that child is pretty amazing. Incredible. Now, you, you're also looking for, for young authors as well to, to, to maintain. You've got five books coming up. Absolutely. What, what's, what's Absolutely. The criteria? What's the criteria? The, the criteria is just in, well, the age. So we work with all, well, we, we work with authors from seven to 15. And then six year olds will say, I want to be in the Ivory. I want it to be my grandparent. <laughs> so they paired up with their brother or sister. So now we've got, we go down from six right to 15. So that's the kind of age group we're looking at. Um, it's black children that I work with, 
primarily because I, it, it's, it's an opportunity for me to, to give them something, you know, they don't have that opportunity. So, and, um, so, and I want to push forward the legacy of the black community. And then after that, I'm just looking for enthusiasm and I'm just looking for somebody that is going to have the commitment to see it through. So I'm like my son, he is, you know, the, the most, most brainiest of children, but he has enthusiasm, you know, he's keen, he's committed and he's on his, well, he's just finished his seventh book, Incredible. you know, so I'm not looking for anything more than that really as criteria. The, the initiative that I'm uh, reading is called Our Roots in Every London mm. School Library, which aims to ensure children across London can read the heroic tales of some of our young authors, their ancestors and their epic journeys to the UK. Mm. Now, I think it's a great mm. idea, but I want to challenge you to get this national. I, I think it's such a fantastic idea. I think, why should all, everyone in London just get the best of it, right? We want it. <laughs> no, I I totally agree. I totally agree. And when I sort of thought about the campaign, the first thing I did was I looked at how many schools are there nationally, you know. Yeah. I, I was looking in England first, first and foremost. And in order to get every school in England a copy of Our Roots, yeah. you know, you were talking about having to raise about, you know, um, 50, 60,000 yeah, pounds. Yeah. And with children as well, when you're doing a project like this, they want to see an end, they want to see an outcome. And if we're still, you know, raising money and raising money and raising money, it just gets a bit tiresome sometimes. So we had to start, try and do something that, that is achievable, challenging but achievable, and that was London. And it would be about 20,000 pounds to furnish all of those London schools with a copy of our roots, as well as getting it delivered and get, you know, the administration of that would cost about 20 grand. So that seemed a bit more realistic. However, some of our authors, they're from, um, um, oh God, Nottingham and uh, Dudley, I think it is. And, yeah. and, and at, not all of them based in London. So that, those areas where they are from, make sure that those, those are furnished with books. So. It, well, well, you know what? You're quite right. Start small, tick the box, get it done. And then from there, you can, yeah. it's, it's a foundation, isn't it? Building on the foundation. Absolutely. And I know you're asking this weekend, donate a fiver, five for 55, you, you, you hit <laughs> 55 and people are donating on the Just Giving page. Can you tell us how we can find that page? Do you know the details? Oh okay, so um, Friday I was 55. And I yeah. give thanks for 55 years, you know, I, as you read the catalogue of, of, of illnesses I've gone through, you know, I'm just happy, blessed to be here at 55. And for me, that's a celebration in itself. And I thought maybe I would use that opportunity again with my marketing, you know, hat on working for The Voice and stuff like that as a marketing promotions person. I thought about, okay, let's, how about it's this weekend? I think it's, we started off with saying raising 555 pounds. And what we're asking people to do, or my friends to do, um, is give, give five pounds because I'm 55. So I've, I've made to 55 basically. Yeah. And I don't think I could see be refusing that. So if I started it on social media like Facebook, anybody who says, oh, so wonderful, praise the Lord, you're here, and oh, whatever, they're the first people I'm going to say, right, boom, boom, I'm in for them, give me five pounds, boom, boom, boom. And um, halfway through Friday, which is my birthday, we hit five, 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 and I thought, woo! -wee. So I said, right, I want a thousand, I want a thousand now, I want a thousand. So I changed the total to a thousand. And then um, the next day, boom, a thousand pounds, woo! So, and then I was going to go for a thousand and five, but I thought I'd be a bit greedy and go for two thousand. And today is Sunday. Oh, should I say that? Maybe. Well, yeah, that's we fine. Hit, it, is. it is. Okay. We haven't hit the um, two thousand, but we've hit the one point five. So I should have satisfied one point five. So we've got about, I think it's sixty quid. No, six hundred quid. Five, five eighty last time I looked to raise. I've got to now pull out all the stops now. Pull out all the stops and start a bit of begging, basically. But if we can hit 2,000, it's a start, and then people can see, oh, that's realistic. Oh, okay, and, and without very much effort and just a bit of pushing, or, or, you know, so anytime I get a message on Facebook saying, oh, I hope you had a great birthday, it'd be even greater if you gave five for five, you know, five, five, so that's what I'm doing, and it worked. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, people can will be seeing this broadcast, and uh, hopefully that will inspire. Uh, what is it? Actually, so there's still a chance. There's still a chance to give. Uh, yep. Sorry, I should lose this opportunity. 
So um, I, I did a Just Giving for this small birthday celebration, Kickstart the 2000. But we have a main page, a main, Go, main GoFundMe page, and it's to and it's it says something like get um, our roots in all London schools. So if you just Google that in um, Google, that GoFundMe page will come up. So get our roots in all London schools. So the two thousand we hope to raise by the end of the day today will go into the main GoFundMe page. Yeah, sounds fantastic. I mean, one, just in closing, now you, you've expressed a, and you certainly demonstrated a, a tenacity for life following your quadruple heart bypass surgery and also bowel cancer. Listen, hey, God bless you. Um, what, what keeps you going? Uh, primarily, if I'm honest, my kids. And not even my big ones, my little kid, you know, and that's where this all started from. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to grow up without a mother. So I, I need to live to make sure that he has a good life. And that's really primarily that. That my faith, you know, gives me the strength and, 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 and all that. But my, my priority really of why I get up or why after chemotherapy, which was awful, you know, after that, me to get out of my bed and say, no, Jules, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, is my son, Romeo, really. Because I, I don't want him to grow up without a mum. Mm. You know, once he's old enough, you know what I mean, I can pop off and, and, and <laughs> get on with it. But at this stage in time, no, that can't happen right now. Okay. Not in the way the world is today. And I want to give him a chance to have, you know, to be happy. And even though I've had all these things that have happened to me, you know, uh, you know, I have to be grateful. I have to be thankful. You know, people have gone through worse. I'm doing a book. Even though I, I, am, uh, I run the only, you know, publishing company in the UK, that deals with black children aged seven to 15. Um, other people have been approaching me about their stories and I said, no, really, actually, I just do it to work with children. And then my friend came along who's had six brain operations. This year she had a six brain operation and no. cried open and dealt with her brain for the sixth time. She said, please, please, please. And I couldn't say no. So mm. on the side, I'm doing her story. And people keep coming and coming and coming and saying so I said, And I'm, I, I learned this, anybody, you know, if you want to do something, you know, you can do it. You can learn it from scratch and, and, and find your own way. For me, what's disheartening is it's quite difficult to get our books distributed, you know, um, nationally in the way that other books are distributed. But, you know, you find a way. And, and you know, five years on, you know, with 13 books, we've got, well, we'll have 18 by the end of the year. And I'm seeing what it's doing to the community. And I feel pleased. And I feel proud about that. So I'll still keep fighting. I'll still keep, you know, knocking on doors and things like that because I know that it will make a difference. For us, for me with the our roots, it is the Windrush generation that tell their stories. And what I noticed when I read those stories was they were happy when they were back in um, the Caribbean with nothing. You know, they played in dirt, you know, so they didn't have any toys, they read books at school, but they were happy, yeah. you know. And they've come over here and built this country you know, and they've been treated badly, really, really badly, you know, and there's some great stories of some great people in that book. And I think that, you know, that needs to be told, that kids need to hear that. Some of the grandchildren that um, interview their grandparents had never spoken to their grandparents like that before. Yeah. You know, even the parents learned something new from those interviews and kept saying, oh, thank you, Julia, I didn't know this, I didn't know that, I didn't know this and whatever. We need to talk to our elders because that's where, you know, all the rich stories are. That's where we're going to find things, you know, out. We need to sit down and watch them cook so I don't have to put in a book <laughs> for you to follow because their, their recipes go when they're gone. You know, one of the grandparents, it was a great-grand that was interviewed by a great-granddaughter, died three days after she was interviewed. But her story is there. Yeah. You know, her legacy is there. So I, I'm about that. and. If Blackjack can get our stories told, that's what I want to do, you know. And, and I'm just learning it from scratch. So I'm telling you out there, anybody who wants to do something, you know, learn it from scratch and you, you know, find your space and find your niche. So I'm pleased about that. That's brilliant. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Great to see you. You're looking great. And, <laughs> and the website is Blackjack, J-A-C, Blackjack Media. Okay, so my name is Julia Angela Coley. 
So, and it was, it's all things black. <laughs> so black jacked, J-A-C. Yes. Black Jack media at, yeah, um, at, no, dot com. Sorry, what am I talking about? It's not yeah, the website, yes. www.blackjackmedia.com. Yeah. Fantastic. Really great to talk to you. And I really wish Thank you success. You. And they will keep in touch. Yeah, and I hope it's not, what, 33 years I'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for connecting. Bless you, yeah.